what's up guys? Today I'm going to do a quick video and show you how you can test your uh, engine coolant temperature sensor using a basic multimeter. Alright, before we get onto the testing procedure, let's talk about how these sensors work. Uh, these basically measure resistance. The hotter your coolant, the re less resistance is going to be in this sensor, and the colder it gets, the more resistance will be in this sensor. Now, as you can see, this sensor has only two pins. Other sensors, uh, they have four pins. For those, the other extra pins are, uh, they send a signal to your uh, temperature gauge on your dash, and that's why they have four pins. But, you know, some engines, they have two different sensors, one for the computer, the other one for your dash. Now, if you have, if you have an engine with those, you want to make sure if you're having overheating issues or your radiator fan's not kicking in all the time, you want to find the sensor that's responsible for that and test that one. And obviously, if you have a problem with your temperature gauge, you want to find the corresponding sensor for, for that, okay? Okay, so what you would need to do next is to just go online or go to your repair manual and find the corresponding resistance reading for different temperatures. Now, this is a sensor from my Ford Mustang and from what I could gather online, the resistance at boiling temperature, which is 212 Fahrenheit, is supposed to be between 1,760 ohms to 2,380 ohms. And we're going to measure that, but first, we're going to also measure this in a, in a cooler uh, temperature. And I have here a cup, and I got a small thermometer, and I've got this, this the water in here is about 68 degrees, and the ohm reading for that temperature should be about 31,700 ohms to 42,900 ohms, okay? And as you can see, I've rigged some wires and connectors together to make this a uh, lot smoother and easier for this video but you can all obviously just use your test leads and get them on the sensors make sure when you do that they don't touch each other because then that you wouldn't be uh, able to get a right reading and the way you want to set up your uh, multimeter is uh, basically to just find out the highest measurement you're going to be taking in our case it's going to be between 31,000 to 42,000 plus so you want to put the setting to the setting just after that. So we got, you know, 200, 2,000, 20,000, 200,000. So since both those numbers are above 20,000, you want to set it to 200,000. And whatever reading you get, you're going to times that by 1,000. Obviously, that's because, you know, you know, there's not enough space here to give you 31,000 ch and change. So therefore, it's going to be 31 point whatever. And then whatever number you get here, you just times that by 1,000 to get the number, uh, to get the right reading, okay? All right, now I'm just gonna hook these on here. Okay, as you can see, we got 29.4 or 29,100 ohms. That's just the temperature the sensor is at right now. But uh, now we're just gonna put this in the water and see how that changes. We should be, we should get 31,700 plus. As you can see, we got, we're right in the range right now. We got 31,008, 34,000, and it's still moving up. So as long as it stays between 31,700 ohms to 42,900 ohms, this is a good reading. Okay, as you can see, it settled down around 38,400 ohms, and it stopped moving. So that's a good reading. But uh, next, we're gonna measure at the boiling temperature. So I'm just gonna go get some uh, water from my coffee maker, throw the sensor in there, and get our reading. All right, here we go. Now, I don't think this is actually in uh, boiling temperature. It's probably closer to 180, 190-ish. But anyway, we should see an, you know, we should see the resistance go down uh, by a lot. Okay. There we go. It's shooting down. Now we're looking for resistance of uh, 1,760 to to 2,380. Okay, it looks like we sell around 5,600 ohms, and according to my chart, that's a reading for when the coolant is at uh, about 180 degrees. Now, I'm pretty sure that I know this is a right, this is a good coolant temperature sensor, and, but you know, I'm pretty sure that's actually, you know, the, the, the water I got out of my coffee maker was probably not at boiling temperature. By the time I got here, it probably cooled down a little bit too. So that's a good reading, and that's what you really want to look for. I mean, a bad sensor with the reading would be way off and it would be pretty obvious uh, rather quickly if you have a bad sensor, okay? 
But if you want to be 100% sure, you want to get a thermometer that reaches, that measures, you know, up to 200 degrees plus of Fahrenheit, and then that way you can be more precise. Now, I couldn't use this on this because this only goes up to 120 degrees, but if you want to really be sure, you want to get a thermometer that measures up to, you know, 200 degrees plus. All right, and that's all there is to it. I should mention that you could do this test with the sensor on the engine as well. Uh, but, you know, don't be afraid to remove this from the engine because these sensors, the, usually the way they position is uh, up on top of the engine and when you remove them, coolant is not going to come rushing you out. Just make sure you do it when the engine is cold, okay? So, yeah, I hope this video helps people out there. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.